Well, I was busy this summer doing some decor and lighting and cool podcasty stuff. And uh, I think it looks okay. Not bad. It changes things. A little different angle, maybe. Maybe back just this to this. I don't know. It's going to be a quick video because uh, I spent so much time moving wires around. I have patience. <laughs> so I don't want to be late. Uh, I got five minutes. Okay, I want to talk about inflammation and acidity and alkalinity because they all are connected. And a lot of people, they're always saying to me, I'm trying to alkalinize myself. And the first thing they'll be like, I have uh, lemon water first thing in the morning because they heard that even though, you know, it's acid, lemon, it's acidic, citric acid, all that stuff, that it actually has the opposite effect in the body. It may, not exactly. Yes, but not, not how you know it to do it. So it's kind of like a simile I'm going to make. It's like when someone's small or child, I guess, that's, that's, so it's a small person, uh, you tell them something, to let them understand it to their like concept of understanding, their intellect. You're not going to tell them like, oh, the sun is a big gaseous ball of exploding, whatever. You just say it's a light in the sky. Okay, it's warm. What are you going to do? Tell them more? Or tell them the moon's made of cheese. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It's your kid. But you're not going to tell them all this stuff about like what it's really made of. I mean, unless you want to educate your child, I guess it's not a bad thing. My point is sometimes we dumb things down. I do that a lot. But it's just to help get a point across. So when you drink lemon water in the morning, is it actually alkaline? The effect, the effect is alkaline. What, that, what does that mean? I, I, I'm almost confusing myself. But it is a little bit of a, uh, what's the word? I'll have to cut this part out. It's a paradox. It's a paradox. This is light is going to bother me. It's a paradox. Meaning, even though something is acidic, in the net outcome, you become more alkaline. And how does that work? Well, there's many different elements that this lemon water, at this time of day, that it's having an effect that's going to alkalinize you. Uh, mainly, if you can stimulate liver function it will mobilize fats it will prompt gastric juice production it will reduce the amount of carbohydrate that's getting stored around your organs visceral fat aka fatty liver uh, it will cause a shift in minerals from outside of cells into cells and it will also help dredge in pick up debris from the kidneys to filter out. So you're actually going to flush your system out of things that are probably net acidic. Is that confusing? Did I make it worse by explaining what it's doing? Maybe, but at least you know now. But that's not the point of this podcast, besides me showing off my cool lighting. My cool lighting. Back to me. Um, the... The things that we do that creates acidity in the body, I think we'd be very surprised to recognize what is actually acidifying. Now, let's take, there's two good examples. Because people would argue that like, oh, that's not good. But then the other thing, they'll be like, oh, but it's good though. Uh, protein, animal protein in particular, uh, is considered inflammatory. And it is truly is i know because when i do live blood analysis i can see i can see the effects of inflammation on the blood in the in someone who has animal protein versus a vegan vegans have the prettiest blood doesn't mean it's the best blood that's maybe another podcast however the net benefit of consuming things that are potentially inflammatory has a much better net gain in your health than avoiding things that have the chance of stimulating inflammation um, and, and trying to minimize things. They're like, oh, I want to just eat only alkaline foods. Dang. 
get used to my new setup. What would you do? What, what, how, how would your health benefit if you just had alkaline foods? Do you think that actually would have a net alkalinizing effect on the body? In theory, yes. In actuality, no. How do I explain that part? I mean, over overconsumption of anything is not good. And if you don't have enough protein, and let's be honest, animal protein is the most effective and efficient bi and most bioavailable type of protein. That's just all how it is. If you don't have sufficient muscle mass, you inevitably will have more body fat across the board. I can see it on the in body, our body composition and analysis. It jumps off the screen, off the page, really, it's a page. Um, and when you don't have enough animal protein, you lack muscle, you gain fat. Now, if you have higher body fat, wouldn't that have a net? acidifying effect on the body because now you're increasing adipocytes and inflammatory markers that are produced and affected by the amount and volume of body fat that you have not to mention all the problems with having a muscle deficit like muscles maintaining the strength and density of your bones and then if you don't have enough muscle mass and you don't strength train when you're older you have an increased risk of osteoporosis which is a like very acidic uh, um, condition, if you ask me. Essentially, your bones are leaching into your urine. That, that's what the outcome is. So what's my point? Sometimes we need to consume a balance of things, both acid and alkaline, in order to have a net health, healthy state, homeostasis, balance, and then there's other things like exercise. Exercise, it's the act of exercise is very acidifying. So it's a long day's day of work. So should you not exercise? So I guess you guys are starting to see where I'm coming from. It's like it's okay to do things that are acidifying. But you just got to know that it is and why you're doing it. So if you eat animal protein, you got to balance it with greens and other alkaline, alkalinizing foods or acts or lifestyle so that the net effect is homeostasis and health. To avoid anything that's acidifying would be detrimental. And then the last point, the thing that I find that is the most acidifying thing outside, I, I mean, and this supersedes junk food, alcohol, uh, terrible lifestyle, terrible sleep, terrible, or even excessive amounts of work, mental stress, overthinking. Again, most people can't measure overthinking. They might not even realize that they are an overthinker, but I can tell. <laughs> so I do my live blood analysis, uh, not to get into details, but it just it's obvious and i'll point it out to them i'll say like look see this area here that's not good mineral loss why do you have so much mineral loss an excessive amount of mineral loss the more a person thinks the more proportionately are they losing minerals so the brain is like uh, a car engine and the more you think the more you rev the engine but if you're parked and you're not moving you're not going anywhere with that thought. You're just burning fuel. You're wasting away. Your engine is burning, 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 turning, turning, turning. I feel like there's a song in there. But you're not going anywhere. It's not, it's not effectual. And then your blood is detecting this physiological change. It's a shift in mineral balance. It could be partly overproduction of stress hormones and it's definitely the extraction of minerals from the bones and the tissue into the bloodstream to neutralize this extremely acidifying state long story short if you think too much you're very acidic how do you fix that i mean 
to tell someone to stop thinking is stupid and might might not work. I mean, you work on your mental health, distract yourself, have hobbies, be active, L-theanine, good sleep routine, um, be logical. I don't know, do a diary, make a podcast, do something. It's a distraction, really. Just turn your brain off. It's alkalinizing. 